Good evening this evening, and welcome to Women's Space's Focus on Women. I am Florence Rappaport, Director Emerita of Women's Space, which is, as you probably know, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to serving the needs of today's women, whatever those needs may be. This program, Focus on Women, is presenting conversations with women of interest, women famous and not so famous, women of high achievement, women of special circumstances or special problems, women in the workforce, or women at home, but all women with something to say. If you or someone you know has something special that you think might be of interest to our audience, I would be happy to hear from you. You can reach me, Florence Rappaport, Care of Woman Space, 3 St. Paul's Place, Great Neck, New York, 11021. And that brings us to tonight's guest, Ms. Okja Lim, opera star, who has earned widespread critical acclaim for her many fine performances with opera companies across the United States and in Europe. A native of Seoul, Korea, where she received her early music, Ms. Lim earned her first master's of music degree from Temple University in Philadelphia on a special scholarship, and then was graduated with honors from the Juilliard School here in New York, where she earned another master's of music degree, again on a special voice scholarship. After winning the Artist International Young Musicians Competition in New York, Ms. Lim gave her debut recital at Carnegie Hall in New York. This performance won for her a very favorable review in the New York Times in which the critic labeled her voice, and I quote, operatic, with dramatic power, an instrumental timbre, and very effective. High words of praise. She is mostly noted for her portrayal of Cho Cho San in Madama Butterfly, recently appearing in the role with the Nevada Opera Theater in Las Vegas, the Arizona Opera in Phoenix, the Sarasota Opera in Florida, the Opera Delaware in Wilmington, Delaware, and the Westchester Lyric Festival in White Plains, New York. You do get around. <laughs> Her other roles include opera star roles, Liu in Turandot, Mimi in La Boheme, Marguerite in Faust, Manon in Manon Lescaut, Violetta in La Traviata, Neda in E. Pagliacci, and Michaela in Carmen. And that is just a few of the ones she has and can do. Highlights of her career include also recitals in Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., St. Paul, Minnesota, Princeton, New Jersey, and New York City, as well as in Brazil, in Brazil and Brussels in Belgium. A taped version of her butterfly, produced by the National Endowment Television, National Educational Television Network with the Brooklyn Opera Society, was aired on PBS television in the metropolitan area. She has appeared as guest soloist with the Korean Symphony Orchestra of New York. That's a nice pairing. The Hollywood Wilshire Com Symphony Orchestra in Los Angeles and the Cherry Hill Symphony Orchestra in New Jersey. Most recently, she gave her debut recital in Busan, Korea as guest soloist and performed Cho Cho San of Butterfly with a major opera company in Korea. In May of 1995, in the near future, she will be guest soloist with the Pusan Civic Philharmonic. It is with great pride and high expectations that I welcome Ms. Okja Lim. Thank you for having me here. It is our pleasure, Ms. Lim. Ms. Lim, those are amazing credentials. I, at, at the risk of going on too long, I simply had to say all the wonderful things you've done so high level, so wide ranging, and such critical acclaim, really wonderful. Thanks. So, before we talk about you and your life, which is the main subject of today, I thought it might be generous to share with the audience a short selection from Madame Butterfly, your famous, famous role as Cho Cho San, singing Un, Un Bel D. Is yeah. that agreeable to yes. you? Yes, I, I love to. Very good. So then set the stage for us so we're prepared for this segment. Um, act two, after three years marriage, Cho Cho San is waiting for her husband's coming from America. And every time cannon shots, sh when she heard it, she ran to the, you know, har look, look at the harbor and then where's American ship with American flag. So this is dreaming of her husband's coming. And her maid, Suzuki, couldn't believe, and, it, and she said, please, have a faith in me. 
my love is stronger than anything else, and I'm waiting for him. So she's defecting beautiful since her husband's coming up toward her hilltop of Nagasaki. So it's her dream. So she's trying to convince, convince her maid, Suzuki, her maid, yes, to have faith. Get rid of your fear. Have a strong faith in me because I'm waiting for him. And now we will hear the aria as sung by Oak Jo Lim as Cho Cho San in Madama Butterfly. Thank you. Okja. May I call you Okja? Please do. How beautiful, how powerful, how moving. Oh, Thank you are you. wonderful, wonderful. One critic really appreciated it, and I loved what he said. May I quote him? Sure. Okja Lim's voice is extraordinary, true, strong, warm. Add to that the inimitable charm of her movements, which we just saw, and you have found the ideal of what Cho Cho San should be. What a compliment that is, and it Thank happens you. to be perfectly true. All right, Okja, now let's talk about the making of this musical <laughs> star. You were born in Korea. Oh, yes. 
right after the war. After the war, in and Seoul. In Seoul. And I come from a very large family. I have five sisters and two brothers. I'm the youngest one. Uh -huh. They are all musical, but I'm the one who is persistent and stubborn to pursue musical career. We, and they want me to be a doctor. Go Your to parents? Medicine. Yes, more practical. Music as a hobby, take it. But, yeah. you know, life is tough as, a, as an artist. So do more practical. And I said, I will return to music no matter what I do now. So why should I waste my time? Seven, eight years in medical school. That so was wonderful. I was a stubborn child. So stubborn child. Yeah. So you went to school in Korea. Yeah, you have one woman's university. And this is solely for women actually established at, in 19, no, 1886 by one missionary woman, Mrs. Scranton, studied one woman. At the time, it's really dark age for women. And now nearly 15,000 elegant, beautiful, and intelligent ladies. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? What a nice feminist sidelight that is to your career. You went to this all women's university yes. established by a woman over a hundred years ago. Right. Isn't that wonderful? And did you major in music? Yes. Because you had already announced your right. <laughs> commitment. Fantastic. So when and how did you first realize that you had this special gift? Aside from wanting to do it, how did you know you had it? To do in high school days actually my childhood um, in my childhood my first talent and dream is drawing and painting and making dolls and dad's clothing which I made my dress too you made <laughs> that dress how I mean, beautiful. I thank you and then later um, I have a strong passion toward music but everybody said you have a pretty voice but I wasn't sure because I was insecure sensitive shy girl mm. and once I found passion in me, I said, I want to be a singer. I want to be a singer. But I wasn't really confident. I didn't have any confidence in me. I said, just only desire I had it. And I didn't know what I had at the time. But Isn't later, that amazing? I discovered but you had the desire, and the talent proved itself. By good friends and good teachers surrounding me. And encouraging right. you. Wonderful. Especially in this country. What, what, a, what a lucky uh, thing to have a gift, to do something that you love to do, and then to devote your life to that. Yeah, but besides that, we need another luck, timing. Timing and besides, luck, yes. Yeah, yes, besides well, talent. <laughs> you know my definition of luck, <laughs> opportunities that present themselves to the prepared mind. And you yes. certainly are prepared, and your mind is certainly set, Absolutely. and the opportunities have come and will continue to come. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you're familiar with the American um, scholar, philosopher, intellectual, Joseph Campbell. He did a series on public television mm -hmm. where your Madama Butterfly appeared, and he, he said, in life, the absolute key to a good life is follow your bliss. Do that which it is that matters the most to you that you care most about. Well, you certainly are Absolutely. living by that precept. Absolutely, I agree. Well, it's, it's lucky. I mean, not too many people can do that in, in the practical realities. They have to be doctors. <laughs> 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 so, but you are following your bliss, and the world is a better place for it. Because I'm happy what I'm doing. You're happy with what you're doing. Yes. And you are gifted. That was an incredible aria. Incredible. Thank you. But I'm not fully satisfied yet because I didn't meet my goal yet, but I'm waiting for that moment. Well, you're coming. such a young person. Give, you, <laughs> give yourself a chance. Sometimes it, impatient, too. <laughs> it will come. It will come. Thank you. Okay. So. so then you came to the United States for the purpose of studying young music mm -hmm. here, and you had a scholarship to Temple University, University. in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Was that good? A, it was beautiful. I'm academically a wonderful school, and in fact, uh, I got scholarship by uh, Mr. Raymond Hubble, who composed Poor Butterfly, the song, which I don't know, but lately I just you know, get the music from oh, really? a good, good friend of mine. So I got scholarship you know, in, his in his name. name. Lucky, yes. wonderful, lucky, <laughs> lucky. You were prepared. I was lucky, yes, I would say. I was there, lucky. There's an element of luck. Yeah. It was an opportunity, but you were prepared to, <laughs> to receive it, to catch the ball and run with it, as they say in football. Okay. 
And then Juilliard, another wonderful opportunity, right? It's hard to get into Juilliard. It's it, competitive. It was competitive. And many, many students from all over the world, they want to come to Juilliard School. Even I learned about Juilliard School when I was in Korea, when I was very young. I said, like, wow, that's a dream. I, someday. Yeah, someday. I would someday. like to. So then to that prepared mind, and another lucky opportunity presented itself. Yeah, for five years training and then educated there is as a performer at Temple University as a scholar, perhaps, in music. But Julia did, you know, training students as an excellent performer whenever we are ready to do that. Them. Yes. Wonderful. So you got the best of both possible worlds, <laughs> the musical training and background, and then the performing skill from, from the, the, the palace of musical <laughs> study, Julia. Right. Are. So tell me, in all this time that you were studying here in America, did you find that hard and lonely? Um, I was a very strong, uh, willpower child, perhaps. You know, when I left my home, I said, there's nobody behind me. I have to be independent, not become nostalgic, especially holiday season come. And then I don't want to be homesick. And luckily, I had many American good friends, family, oh. and they had me. You know, but if I were really you know, so weak and sentimental, I don't think I could succeed so far. So I learned how, how to become independent and strong. Tough, tough, <laughs> tough, tough. Yeah. Well, That's yeah. interesting because um, you probably know Ellen Bjornaby, the flutist, uh, yes, international yes, yes, flutist. Yes, yeah, beautiful artist. Who, uh, she's Norwegian, mm -hmm. and she's, her husband is in the diplomatic community, mm -hmm. so she gets around in the world now. But when she was a young girl, she got a scholarship to study flute in Germany, mm -hmm. and she found the language difficulty and the aloneness very hard, but also again with the will and the intense commitment to her profession, she she did it. But it was not it wasn't a happy, easy time for her. No. Seems to me it was a little easier for you. I don't know why. You, I, I think you have a little more um, outgoing personality. She's a little more reserved. Actually, music brought my nature out. I was a very shy, sensitive girl. Nobody would believe it. <laughs> but it's I hard was. to believe now. But music, you know, I have to really express with music and then my nature really brought up, opened up. So, so you found friends and right. you made a life here and right. you were very happy. Yeah. Now one other quick question about the, the life you've chosen. It's, it's, a, it's one of great discipline, great rigor, high demand, sometimes even sacrifice, right? Lots how of does, sacrifice. How does that sit with you? Uh, because I put music uh, as my first love in life and then other things comes next. So. I had to really give priority on music and stay, concentrate on and yeah. stay focused, right? Which you do sometimes difficult. I have to give up um, earthly pleasure also in order yeah. to keep my music and struggling also. But you know, you will you will really maintain once you set goal and then strong goal. In Obviously, the kind of um, success in in the world of performing and particularly opera where there are so many other factors. I mean, the voice, the physical stamina mm -hmm. to go through three hours of intense giving. Right. <clears throat> and the languages that you have to master. Has um, that all been hard for you? Hard work all these years. You really have to learn everything, every single phrase, language meaning thoroughly. Make your own. It took a long time to master one opera. You know? And then once you started, and you know how to manage it, make your own also. And uh, it's lots of sacrifice and uh, you know, dedication. And the, the, the key is exactly what you said, keeping your eye on the goal, knowing what it is you want to do and being willing to do whatever you uh, have to do. Right. And then the moment comes and you are ready. Ready. And you right. will be ready. I'm ready any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me. Um, you, of course, know Roberta Peters, oh, the yes, American a great singer. Uh, soprano. Yes, yes. Great singer, mm. beautiful woman. Right. It reminds right. me of you a little bit. She, <laughs> I, I met her, of course, later in life, mm -hmm. and she's much older. She was a guest. She sat in this chair, and she talked about the, um, the readiness. She was so intent on a career in opera. Mm -hmm. She learned, studied, 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 learned, l knew all the operas. And one day when the woman got sick, who was the lead in Don Giovanni, mm -hmm. the Zerlina role, right. She was able to go on in one day. She knew the music. She was prepared. They fitted the gowns to her, and she went on. 
So mm -hmm. I see that happening to you one day yeah, at well, the Metropolitan, <laughs> too. I hope that'll work mm -hmm. out. So um, in, in terms of sacrifice, I wanted to ask you, do you um, have a personal life? You're not married? Do you I hope to, want to? Well, uh, I haven't found the right man for me who has a great love for music and for lo love for me and, you know, appreciation who could share my life. So, as they say, good men are hard to find <laughs> and somebody with all those special qualifications. But in a way, I hope you uh, find him because I think it's nice to go through life two by two, which I have to knock a little wood. I've yeah, done. I don't give a hope. I know. I'll, I'll wait for him like a wait, butterfly. Wait him, yes. <laughs> Las Beto. And your outcome will be better, I am sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so talking about Madame Butterfly again, uh, we're getting close to the end, and I do want to share, I know the audience is <laughs> hungering for more, right? The, the uh, final aria yes. from Madame Butterfly. You want to set the stage for us, and we'll play that, mm -hmm. if you're willing, that sure. is. Yes? Okay. And uh, now, uh, American husband, R Pink Benjamin Franklin Pinkerton came with his lawful wife, <gasps> Kate Pinkerton, to take the baby to America, then Cho Cho Sang gave up hope for her life, and uh, it's better, in order to send the baby to America, it's better for her to die. So she read the inscription from the dagger from her father, who was a samurai. It's better to die with honor instead of living with disgrace and try to kill herself, and the baby's coming out, and it, it's really heart rendering, farewell goodbye my precious child one day look at my face your mother's face one day when you grow up you will remember faint remembers, remembrance of your mother goodbye my love and then send the baby out go and play play and she okay. dies yeah. for her child's future yes. she's only 18 years old but oh, what, a <laughs> what, a, what a decision what a tragedy right. what a beautiful right. story all right so I think we'll um Play that now if we can. The the suicide aria. What is the name? Do 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 to the baby. You 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 come from heaven, and goodbye, my love. Two 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 two, from the last act. In fact, the end. The end of Madame Butterfly, with beautiful Oak Jalim singing Cho Cho San. Thanks.
Okja. <laughs> I have to fight back the tears. That was so moving. Oh, my <laughs> God. How to thank you for sharing your life and your talent with us. You are wonderful. It was a rare and special treat. Thank you. We wish you every possible success in your career. We'll be watching every step of the way. And when it's the first night at the Met, I expect to be there. Certainly. I expect to be there. Thanks. So thank you, Oak Jalim, for being here. Thank you, dear audience, for being there. You Thanks. have certainly been rewarded for <laughs> this wonderful, wonderful operatic performance. Thanks recently. for the invitation, and I hope to be back soon, sometimes. Wonderful. The pleasure was all ours <laughs> and the audience's. So I say thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is Florence Rappaport saying good night this night, and looking forward to seeing you on our next night. <laughs>